everyone, it's Cheyenne from Love Zebras and Ehlers Danlos Syndrome on Facebook or Love Zebras and EDS on Instagram and Twitter. And today for my Ehlers Danlos Syndrome Awareness Month video, I wanted to do a video on what is EDS because it's a little confusing. If you think about it, it's a genetic condition. So it's because of our DNA being messed up that we end up with this whole disaster of a body. That a lot of the things just don't seem to be related and they don't make sense very well. So I printed off the information from the Ellers Danlos Society's website, www.ellers-danlos.com. And I printed out what is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and what are the symptoms of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. That way you could understand it just a little bit better and you could understand me a little better. So to start off, just quick, personally for me, I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome type 3 crossover type 4. So that means I have the hypermobility type and I have a crossover form of the vascular type. So I have both, basically. <laughs> And here we go. Okay, what is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is often referred to as EDS. It is a collection of heritable connective tissue disorders. Either directly or indirectly, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is known or thought to alter the biology of collagen in the body, which is the most abundant protein which can lead to multi-systemic symptoms. Each type has certain physical traits and with notable exception to the most common form, the hypermobility type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, most types have a known disease-causing gene. So type three, which I have, does not have a genetic test they can do. They just have to go through the Biten scale, which I'll talk about in another video, and genetic test, er, um, sorry, the Biten scale and clinical diagnosis, so based off of your symptoms and your family history and things like that. But like classical type, vascular type, kyphosis type, um, I can't think of the other types, um, they all have a genetic test as far as I know. I know for a fact classical and vascular do, I'm pretty sure. But yes, so hypermobility does not have a genetic test. There are physical characteristics that are common to all types of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, including hypermobile joints, which are joints that move in greater amounts than expected, like my elbow hyperextending or my finger going to my arm or my finger bending backwards all crazy. Those are all signs. Um, and skin involvement, such as any of the following, soft, stretchy, saggy, too thin, easy bruising, easy wounding, poor wound healing, and or atrophic scarring, atropic scarring, not sure how you say that word, which I have the very soft velvety skin, like I don't have to wear lotion or anything, my hands are just really soft and all my skin is soft, ah, bug, <laughs> joys of filming outside. And um, my skin is very see-through, so you can see my veins, and it bruises super easy. I can just lightly bump something, or resting my hand on a table has bruised my hand before. It's not good, and my skin gets cut open easy, and my I heal really slowly, and stuff like that. It's no fun. Let's see. Each type is a distinct entity and may have very specific and unique features. It is highly improbable to have more than one type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, but as they have features and biology in common, each type may appear to have a variable features of other type, which is why I have type 3 crossover type 4. I have symptoms of type 4 and the facial features and a bunch of other stuff of type 4, and the family history that would lean towards type 4. So, I have both, kind of? Okay, what are the symptoms of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? Clinical manifestations of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome are most often joint and skin related and may include joints, joint hypermobility, loose or unstable joints which are prone to frequent dislocation and or subluxation, which is subluxation is when your joint doesn't completely go out of place, it just is kind of off where it is, it goes part way out, and then can go back in. Um, Hyperextensible joints, which means they move behind, beyond the joint's normal range, and early onset of osteoarthritis. 
And for your skin, you have the soft, velvety-like skin, variable skin, hyperextensibility, fragile skin that tears or bruises easily. Bruising may be very severe. Severe scarring, slow and poor wound healing, development of molluscoid suedo tumors, fleshy lesions associated with scars over pressure areas. Then miscellaneous slash less common. Chronic early onset debilitating musculoskeletal pain, usually associated with the hypermobility type. I have severe pain and I'm on a lot of pain meds and I see a doctor who puts my joints back in place every week and I wear bracing all the time. I'm in a wheelchair when I go out of the house because my joints go out of place too often and I get too tired and in too much pain that I actually end up in the hospital because of it. The pain gets so severe. So. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is definitely associated with pain. Don't let a doctor tell you otherwise because I had someone do that the other day and they are so wrong. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is extremely, extremely, extremely painful, especially for me. Now other people, it may not be as painful, but because Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome has such a wide range of symptoms, but for me it is extremely painful. Um, arterial slash intestinal slash uterine fragility or rupture usually associated with the vascular type. Scoliosis at birth and scleral fragility associated with the kyphoscoliosis type. Poor most muscle tone associated with the arthrochalasia type. I, I honestly don't know how to say that one. If you know how to, please tell me down below because I would love to actually know how to say that. Um, mitral valve prolapse and gum disease. Each type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is defined as a distinct problem in making or using one of the types of collagen. Collagen is what the body uses to provide strength and elasticity to tissues. Normal collagen is a strong protein that allows tissue to be stretched but not beyond its limit and then safely returns that tissue to normal. So for everyone else, in the world who doesn't have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, their tendons and ligaments and connective tissue is more like those Livestrong bands where you can pull them and they might stretch a tiny bit, but then they go right back to their shape. And those of us with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, we're like those old worn out hair ties, the ponytail holders that you've been wearing for like a year and a half in your hair, they're all stretched out, the stuff is coming off, the fabric's coming off and then it can just snap and it never goes back into that perfect little circle that it started out as. It just keeps getting bigger and crappier looking until it just eventually breaks. So if you understand that, that's kind of what our connective tissue is like compared to other people's. Okay, let's see, where am I? Okay, collagen is found throughout the body and Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a structural problem. An analogy, if one builds a house with bad materials, with cheap nails, or only half the wood, dang it, required, oh, my battery's dying. Okay, it's still recording. Okay, let's keep going, see if I can finish this. Um, let's start over. An analogy, if one builds a house with bad materials, with cheap nails, or only half the wood required, problems will arise. Some problems are more likely to show up than others, but because the bad or missing materials are everywhere and not necessarily visible, one can be surprised where the problem occurs. It is much the same thing with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and collagen. The collagen with which a person with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is built is not structured the way it should be, or only part of it is produced. With a badly built or processed collagen, <laughs> the tissue that relies on it can be pulled beyond normal limits and this could be damaging. Collagen is the most abundant protein in the body and types of collagen can be found almost anywhere in the skin, muscles, tendons and ligaments, blood vessels, organs, gums, eyes, and so on. It's literally everywhere. The problems resulting from one's body being built out of a protein that misbehaves unreliably can be widespread and in the wide range of severity. It shows up in places that seem unrelated until the underlying connection to Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is recognized. So basically, because our collagen is made incorrectly or it's not produced fully, that means the majority of our body is made wrong. And that means that 
we really need our DNA to be corrected to treat it because if we can't get it to start producing correctly, it doesn't matter what bracing we wear or if we're in a wheelchair or what medications we take because it will just keep making more crap, <laughs> basically. And the reason I haven't had many joint surgeries is because I had a surgeon tell me, I can't connect crap to crap. It will be crap and I will have to redo your surgery every single year because you will have ruined it and just torn it all up. Because he doesn't have a way to fix the collagen that's already in there and even if he put something else in, say my wrist, he would be connecting it to bad collagen. So it would just fall apart all over again. So yep, yeah, that is a brief overview of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or EDS for short, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments. I will try my best to get back to you. And if you have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, let me know what type you have. Or if you're looking into getting a diagnosis, let me know. I, I just want to hear from you guys. And yeah, happy awareness month. I love you guys. Bye.